absolutely believe that every person that's here this morning, we are here under divine appointment. You are here under divine appointment. And I knew it was raining and everything and tell you what God put in my spirit. I was saying, oh, Lord, you know, uh, I know some people are out of town, this, that, and the other. And I was just like, no. I said, we, we have to release what God has put in our hearts. And we just have to just do what God is telling us to do. Amen. So praise God. I, wanna, I, I want, um, if we could, this is what I would like. All the preparations in the back. I, I just need, uh, and I know you guys do with excellence. I need that to stop. I need everyone to come and grab a seat. Even Miss Betty, Miss Gail, if you could come grab a seat. Um, today is very, very important. So, so we might have to take a little extra in hospitality to get things ready for you at the end. But I need, I need everyone to come because uh, of, of what we're going to share today. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you so much. And we do ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you would move mightily in this place, Father, that you'd speak to our hearts. We thank you for your presence. We ask your blessing upon each and every person that, Lord, as they, as they come here today, Father, to be in the house of the Lord, we thank you that you fill them, that you move in their life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You agree with me, church? Say amen. Okay. Amen. So this is what I want to open up with you. I want to let you, I want you to hear me today. And I do want to ask you something. This may be super hard for some people because of the way that your makeup is, your personality and all of that. I'm going to ask you that as I go through scripture, I do want you to know, I'm asking you if you would follow me and listen to me rather than to start turning, go into your mobile phones, because I don't want you to miss what I'm saying to you, because here's what I, here's what I want to do. I want to do this. I want to make sure we're recording this because you're going to want to hear this message again. I promise you, you can go through the scriptures. We will also have it on YouTube. We will make sure to get that disc over to Melody so that she can put it on YouTube right away. Um, and if you do not do any kind of YouTube or know how to do that, we, I want to do this. Star, I, I want to make sure everyone who needs a disc gets a disc. Okay, let's do that. Let's sow that into your life because today is going to be so, so important. So, I, I, and I do want to tell some of our guests um, just something. It's just been a hiccup for the last month. We're trying to get it fixed. We're, on, we're believing for a, a new Mac laptop. Um, our laptop got stolen so, into somebody's car. It got broken into. And so that's why we haven't had the words on the screen and the scriptures so so you know what I'm saying and if anybody has a, a Mac you know a desktop or a laptop that they're not using you want to donate it let us know you do <laughs> okay well there we go okay so all right so um you know, and I don't know how the specifications work, Keith. I don't know how that works. I don't know if, I don't know how, what we need, but I'm sure it'll do the trick. So praise God. Amen. Thank you, Brother Keith. Amen. It's a good, okay. Well, I believe it, man. The way you dress, I believe it, okay? So listen, so I want to say this to, you, to everyone here. Every one of you are on a journey. In your journey with Jesus, you are on a journey. And let me even start. Listen, there's people in this room. You're just not probably even not even sure, you know, of the Jesus road, you know, yet. And you're just investigating and checking things out and praying and, and seeing, you know, okay, what's what, you know. And that is so exciting because it's still a journey to find truth. It's still a journey to find the goal. And the goal is always God. The goal is Jesus. And so it's awesome to be in that discovery. And we are all at different places in our walk with God. It's very important for us to be careful not to judge where someone's at because, you don't, you, because the bottom line is you were there at one time if you're someone mature. You were there. And so for, for everyone here, what's funny is that if we can go back BC or before Christ, if you saw me in the clubs, you'd be like, there ain't no way that guy's going to be a pastor. How's God going to use that guy grinding up on all these females and doing all these things? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be real. How, how can God use me? But you know what? God saved me. And, use, and, 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 and he, he uses broken people. And we're all on that journey. 
And today I want to talk to you about six encounters with Jesus. Come on now. Six encounters with Jesus. My wife and I, for our honeymoon, and some of you have heard me tell this story, we went to Hawaii, and when we were in Hawaii, and I get the islands mixed up. I don't know if we were on Maui, because we went to Maui, the big island, and then uh, uh, Oahu. And I don't know if we were on Oahu, but whatever the island that has the biggest mountain that's 10,000 feet above sea level, whichever one that one is, okay? The big island, thank you. So, so we were on Kona then. So we were on Kona. And we had purchased, listen to what we had purchased. We had purchased a helicopter ride. We had purchased a Molokini Crater to snorkel in Molokini Crater. Have you ever done that? We snorkeled in Black Rock. Uh, all these amazing places. We saw the battleship in Oahu and everything. And so when, at this one hotel, when we were in, in Kona, we asked the little lady. She was so cool. She was so, uh, uh, she was so cool. And we were talking to her. And I said, listen, I said, we want to know some things to do. And she says, well, what are you doing right now? I said, well, we have a helicopter ride plan. And she's like, oh, that's cool. And, and I said, we have this. And she goes, oh, that's pretty and everything like this. Uh, we're going to see these uh, falls. And she said, no, that's good. That's, oh, that's really good. She, I said, do you recommend anything? And she says, well, I recommend one thing. And she says, uh, and everything you talked about is nothing compared to this. And I was like, well, what is it? And I, well, first of all, I was thinking, how much is it going to cost me? You know what I'm saying? We're just newly married, man, you know? And, and so how much is it going to cost me? And she says, it's not going to cost you anything. She says, but you have to wake up really early in the morning at 2.30 a.m. to start driving. If you want to see something you've never seen before. And I says, well, what am I going to see? And she says, well, you're going to start driving at 2.30 for two hours to get to the top of this mountain, which is 10,000 feet above sea level. So you'll, you'll get there a little bit before 4.30. And she says, as you're driving, you're going to go through sets of clouds she was right. I went through a set of clouds, keep driving sets of clouds, and there's other people going up this thing at this early in the morning. And I said, my God, I said, we're sort of on vacation and everything. Wake up, you know, at 1.30 to, you know, to try to leave by 2.30. It was insanity. But, you know, she said, she said, you will see something you've never seen before. And when I tell you, if I think about everything about my honeymoon, except, of course, being with my wife, hallelujah, you know, I said, bam, okay, listen, but so, so besides that, the greatest thing that I could remember is when we got up there, and you could literally feel like you can grab the stars, like that's how close it, it felt like, it felt like I never saw the stars that bright before, I felt like I can grab them, and then she said, and, and she was telling us all this, but I couldn't see it, until I experienced it. And then so what happened was is that she also said, she goes, now the sun will start to rise. When I tell you I have seen all kinds of movies, I have seen all kinds, of, I have never in my life seen anything like that. When that sun started to come up, she said, when you see the sun, you'll see it 10 minutes before anyone down below sees it. And man, this thing started to, it was like fire. And you know what? One of the, it's actually our best picture, me and Joanne, because it's cold up there and you can't walk fast because the air is thin. And so me and Joanne are just snuggled in a blanket. It's our favorite picture, you know, that I have. It sits on my office desk and that's where we were, 10,000 feet above looking at the sunrise. Let me say this to you. When you want to see something you've never saw before, you got to do things you've never done before. You can take it into athletics, you can take it into studying, you can take it into everything else. But if you want to see something you've never seen before, there's always something you have to do that's out of the ordinary. Always it's out of the ordinary. In a little bit, and I say this more for our guests and stuff like that, I may get a little excited later on. And I'm, normally I apologize for stuff like that. I apologize actually a little too much and I need to stop doing that. I've been told I apologize too much. I'm not going to apologize because, see, here's the thing. We're in March. Do you know what, what March is known for? What is March known for? March Madness. 
You see crazy young people acting a fool, going nuts, going crazy, painting their faces, doing all kinds of things. Like, in, listen, and you know what's funny about it? The first three quarters is like all cool until you get to the fourth quarter. And then everybody is yelling at the ref, wants to kill the ref. People are yelling at players, you know, all this stuff. People losing their mind for a basketball game. Well, I might lose my mind a little bit later for Jesus. So if you could just, you know, just, just know that. Amen. So the first thing I want to, the first encounter I want to talk to you about is this. And I'm, I'm not going to take long on this. But the first encounter is this, is that Jesus is my Savior. When you encounter Jesus as my Savior. Now, what does that mean? When Jesus, and we're going to be, of course, talking about this as Easter comes in two weeks, which is so exciting. But you know how the Lamb of God, Jesus, bought us back? He redeemed us. Redeemed means to buy back. And Jesus bought us. We were lost in sin. We Actually, the, we belong to the enemy. But Jesus bought us back. Amen? And listen, John 3, 16, we all know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. The first encounter is this. I have them, I have them sit in the front right here. Josh and Mary sit in the front. There you go. Hi, you guys. Love you guys. Amen. The first encounter is this, the salvation. Jesus is my Savior. Listen, and when you experience the salvation of Jesus, what, listen, right over here, everybody, listen, what are you saved from? What are you saved from? You know that there's an eternity separated from God that you never, ever want to experience that the Bible talks about. And you are saved. You, not only are you redeemed, you are bought back by God, but you are saved and you are rescued from eternal darkness. This is real. This ain't no fairy tale story. My first encounter is Jesus is my Savior. Hallelujah. He saved me. He bought me. He died for me. He resurrected for me. He sits on the right hand of the Father for me right now. And the Bible says he's interceding for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you, and I'm saying these things from 20, over 25 years of full-time ministry experience, almost 25 years of full-time ministry. I'm telling you from experience. I'm telling you from walking through the word. Let me tell you this second encounter with Jesus is Jesus is my buddy. And I used to judge people in a way like they, they would have their shirts that said, Jesus is my homeboy. And I'd be like, Jesus is way more than my homeboy. But you know where they were at? Where they were at right there. First they had the Jesus save me, Jesus save me encounter. And then they felt like, you know what? God is with me. God is my what? He's my friend. Let me tell you what Proverbs 18.24 says. A man of too many friends comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Jesus is my friend. He is my friend. Jesus is my friend. He will, the Bible says he will never leave you, and he will never forsake you. He'll never let you down. He is your buddy. He is your friend. But let me tell you another encounter. The next encounter is this, Jesus is my rock. Jesus is my rock. Now, what does Jesus is my rock come? Because what happens in the life of the believer who, who they got saved and now they feel God is with them, they, they, they start reading scripture and says, I will never leave you. I'm your friend, all this stuff. But now what happens is this is the fidelity of God begins to kick in. And what is that? You begin to see that God is faithful. He's your rock. You begin to trust him. All of a sudden, you pray a little prayer, and it gets answered. And you pray a little, another little prayer, and it gets answered. And you begin to ask God for direction. And now, all of a sudden, Jesus starts becoming a firm foundation. He starts to, you are saved. He is your friend. But now he becomes a firm foundation in your life. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 says, let us hold fast. The confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. 
He's faithful. 2 Thessalonians 3.3 says, The Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, come on, we all know it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Jesus starts becoming a rock in our life, in our walk with him. The next encounter is Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. See, when we pray the prayer to receive Jesus to be the Lord of our life, in that moment, he really isn't Lord because we haven't fully submitted everything to him. When we first encounter Jesus and we meet him, but like, I don't know about your encounter, but mine was simple. I had sin. I knew I was a sinner. I knew I didn't know God the way way I'm hearing about Jesus. I didn't know God. I wanted to know God. And so what did Jesus do? He paid for my sin. I was like, well, that's easy. I'm a sinner. I I got an A in sinning. You know what I'm saying? I have a master's degree in sinning. So, So I need to come to Jesus and I'm willing to change my life. That was easy. But to say that he's Lord is different. Listen, so Luke 9, 21 to 25 says this. Listen to me. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone. And he said the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. And he must be killed, listen, and on the third day be raised to life. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. He who wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. He who wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily. Everyone say daily. And follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life from me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose and forfeit their soul? He who wants to be my disciple, you must lose your life. He becomes Lord of our life. Pick up your cross daily and follow him. Can I tell you this? I've been preaching preaching the word for almost 25 years. And can I tell you this? I literally have to go to God every day of my life and ask him to purify me, to sanctify me. Well, didn't Jesus already do that? Didn't Jesus make you pure? Yeah, but you know what? I'm still, I still got some jacked up stuff in me that keeps coming out. But Jesus keeps washing me and purifying me and, and, and moving on me. Come on now, church. He's my, I, I, I decide to make him Lord. So, so let, 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 let's go through, I think I have a couple of more scriptures here. I got one more, Colossians chapter 3, verses 2 to 4. It said, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died. Listen, for you, you, I'm talking about you, me. You died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. You are hidden. You are hidden in Christ. So that, that, that fourth encounter is Jesus is my Lord. The next one I love so much. I love this so much. Jesus is now my standard. Now I want to explain this to you. Jesus is my standard. Now, what happens in this encounter, what happens is we begin to understand the power of God. We begin to uh, understand heavenly perspective. So, so l- l- let me just explain this to you. Jesus saved me. Praise God. Get out of jail free card. Hallelujah. Jesus paid it off for me. All right. The second thing, what's number two? He's my buddy. Okay. He's my friend. Jesus sticks closer than a brother. You encounter that. Then Jesus becomes my what? What's number three? My rock. He begins to be faithful. I begin to trust him. I begin to, wow, you are real. You do hear prayers. You you do speak and all that. Number four is Jesus is what? 
my Lord, my Lord. I begin, I, I, I begin a life of surrendering my life to Jesus. Surrendering. You become Lord. You sit on the throne of my heart. But number five is this. The standard and the power of God become a reality to me. And I have a heavenly perspective of who I am as a son of God and as a daughter of God. I have a heavenly perspective. And the reason why this is so important is because this is because God has, God, what's available is he wants to endue us or pour upon us power so that we can be able to do his great things on the earth. And so we begin to understand his kingdom. We begin to understand how his kingdom operates. So now I begin to do things the way the kingdom of God would do it. We begin to do it from a perspective of not like Jesus saved me, Jesus is my buddy, and all this stuff like we're, you know, like we're doing this. Rather that we begin to look and the kingdom of God, a heavenly perspective, an upward thing that's up, I begin to say is now, now, Lord, now from your throne... What is it that you're doing? How are you going to release heaven on earth? Come on, don't let me lose you right now. I need, I need you to be with me here, okay? So Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 says this. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 says, For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. You have Christ on. You're a heavenly being. You begin to understand that. You don't look at things this way anymore. You look at things this way. John chapter 14, verses 12 to 13. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Can I, can I read that one more time to you? Most assuredly, this is Jesus speaking. This ain't no disciples talking. This is Jesus. I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, come on now, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I Go to my Father. What does that mean? I am seated. I am resurrected. I'm seated at the right hand of the Father. The King sits on the throne of the kingdom of heaven. Come on now. And now there is Jesus is different than when he was on the earth. Jesus was at one place at one time walking on the earth. Now he pours himself out upon his children and he gives them authority and them power to go out into the world and do great things. How did he do that? Well, when he resurrected from the dead. I'm sorry, before he, before he went to the cross, he told his disciples, he said, listen, he goes, I want you to go to Jerusalem. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. I'm going to go on the cross. But I want you to go to Jerusalem and I want you to wait for the promise of my father. Listen, whose promise is it? Whose promise is it? The father's promise. The father has this for you and for me. What's going to take place happened after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So this, hap this is qualifies everyone in this room. It wasn't before or, or during Jesus' life. This is after. This is the New Testament, the new covenant we walk in. And so he says this. He says, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of my father. And he said this. He said, you will be endued with power. Acts chapter 1 verse, verse 8 says this. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses. He said, go and wait. I want to give you an, an, an example of this. And don't worry, it's not my cup. I'm just thirsty. Amen. Let me give you an example of this. That's a great helicopter ride that you're going on to. That's a great snorkeling trip that you're going on to. He says, but I want you to see something you've never seen before. Come on now. I need you to wake up early. I need you to make a sacrifice and wake up early. 
and go and see something you've never seen. But you know what Jesus did? Jesus spoke to 500 people when he was saying, he said, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise. Now listen, this is encouraging to a pastor because Jesus was speaking. He spoke to 500, only 120 obeyed him. Only 120 said, I'm willing to believe you that there's a promise. They fasted and prayed for 10 days waiting for this promise. But on that 10th day, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came upon them. The Bible says tongues of fire came upon them. They were filled with the Spirit of God. They were baptized in the Spirit of God. And Peter, who was a chicken, Peter, who was afraid, Peter all of a sudden had a boldness and began, began to declare the Word of God. I want to tell you, church, that is available for every one of us. That encounter with Jesus, because who's the one who pours out his spirit? Jesus from his throne pours out the Holy Spirit. Come on now. This miraculous, powerful thing took place. So Jameer, I want you to, I want you to, I'm actually going to ask the whole band to come up, but Jameer, if you could just come up here. Now I want to say this to y'all. I want you I'm going to save number six for last because you know there's one more, right? Jesus said, you'll receive power when my spirit comes upon you. Let me say this to you, church. The encounters with Jesus are so real. When I first met my wife, my wife, I didn't know her like I know now. When we first got married, I didn't know her like I know now. We have been through battles. We have been through trials. We have been in the valley. We have been in the pit. And we have been in the mountains. And we have had fun. And we have seen great things. And we have seen miracles. We are stronger today. And I know her more because I've walked with her. As you grow in Jesus, can I say something to you? That Listen, Jesus saving you is the most incredible thing ever. But it's not the landing point. It's not the stopping point. I want to walk through, I want to walk you through some things this morning. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes for a moment. First of all, I want to ask you this. Is Jesus your Savior? If you took your last breath today, if you had to step into eternity, this Jesus, this encounter with Jesus, my Savior, if you had to step into eternity and you closed your eyes and you took your last breath, would you, would you stand before a holy God? Would you, would you stand before him? And smile because you knew that you had received Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. If you're not sure of that this morning, please don't let that encounter pass you by. Jesus is God's one and only Son who died on the cross for the sins of the world and He gave His life for you. And I know you may have stuff that you need to work out, but let me say this to you. Jesus wants you to work it out with him. He is able, he is able to help you and strengthen you and give you power. Come on now. And if you're here this morning and you would say, Pastor, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But you want to be sure. I just want you on the count of three. I want you to put your hand up. Number one. I believe God sent his son for me. Number two, I know that I have sinned against God and I need to be cleansed. I need a savior. And number three, I want to I want to surrender to him. I want him to be my savior. Lift up your hand. Three. Three. Who's that? God bless you. 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 Praise you, Jesus. You can put those hands down. I know who you are. God 
that is so powerful. I want you right now, church, I want you to pray with these four people. I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to pray this prayer right now. Heavenly Father, come on, let's all pray it together. Heavenly Father, I believe in you. I know that you made me. I know that you created me. I thank you so much that you love me enough to send Jesus, your one and only Son, to die on the cross for me. I surrender to you, God. Please forgive me. Purify me. Sanctify me. Make me new. I surrender to you. I give you my life. Help me, God, to walk in your word. To understand you greater. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. I was unworthy, but you loved me anyway. I was lost in sin, but you saved me. Thank you, Jesus. I surrender to you. I give you my life. Those people that pray that prayer, I'm going to be speaking with you after service. And we're going to have a, just a moment together because we want to help you to grow spiritually. We want to help you. This is so important. Number two, I want to say to you right now that Jesus is my buddy. Jesus is my friend. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And I want to say to you, if you haven't encountered yet, that Jesus is your friend. You haven't you haven't felt that yet. And you just, you just right where you are, I'm not going to call you forward or nothing, but right where you are, I said, like, I need to feel the closeness of Jesus being my friend. Come on, put your hand up right there. Don't be ashamed because this is a powerful day. If you haven't felt the fact, I see that hand right there. God bless you, sister. Anyone else? Come on, this is powerful. We're going to walk through this right now. Jesus is my friend. So, Father, I pray for these people that lifted up their hand. And God, you said in your word, hallelujah, you said in your word, you said in your word that you're a friend who sticks closer than a brother. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus for your closeness and your presence in their life. Oh God, we thank you right now that you just comfort them, console them, let them know that God, they are your child. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. Number three, Jesus is my rock. Jesus is my rock. Let me tell you something, church. What's going to happen in the next moments in your life is so powerful that I want to tell you something. I laugh at any distraction. I laugh at sound noises, all these different things. Because when I tell you this, when I go to the hospital, I will talk to someone for 30 minutes talking about Jesus. When I go to pray with them, that is the exact moment the nurse walks in to give them medicine. You know why? Because the enemy is trying to distract us from anything that God would want to do in your life. The enemy is real. Listen, as you're about to get prayer, you'll get a crazy text message or an Instagram post or something like that. Listen, let God do a work in your life. Jesus is my rock. If you've not experienced the faithfulness of Jesus, I'm going to pray this over everyone, but if you need that prayer specifically, that I want Jesus to be my rock, I want to know, I want to know, I want to see his faithfulness. I want to understand that. I want to walk into, on a firm foundation. Pastor, I've been on the Jesus is my buddy part, but I need to, I, I want to go to the next level and have him be my rock. Come on, put your hand up right there, right where you are. God bless you, sis. God bless you, sis. God bless all of you right there so father we thank you that you are the rock of our salvation we thank you that your fidelity is true we thank you that your word is true we thank you right now father that you are a faithful god that you're mighty and god we can trust your word that your word doesn't lie father god god times may change people may change but your word will not change your word will not change. So we stand, God, and I look at the next level of my life that says, Jesus is my rock. He's my rock. I want Jesus to be my rock. I want to trust him. 
even when my prayers don't seem to be answered, I want to know that He's my rock. When my prayers do get answered, I want Him to be my rock. In Jesus' name, we pray this over everyone. Here's a big one. Jesus is my Lord. Maybe you've been at a place where it's just like, you know what, I trust God. I've been walking and of course I'm saved and all these things. But you know what? There have been areas that I have definitely been holding back. And, and I just, I know that I know, yes, I'm going to heaven, but I'm not sure if I made him the Lord of my life because I haven't surrendered everything to him. And I want to. Jesus, Jesus, this this morning. As pastors praying, I want you to see this, like have this prayer in your heart. Jesus, as pastors praying this morning, I choose to surrender to you. I choose to follow you 100. I know I'm going to make mistakes, but in my heart, I'm saying, God, I surrender all these areas to you. I'm ready to go to that next level. surrender to you right now Lord I'm I completely empty myself of me and I pick up my cross and I'm gonna follow you and father this flesh doesn't control me my soul and my mind doesn't control me but Jesus I pick up my cross and I follow you I follow you Jesus and every day I'll pick up my cross and if I fall I'll pick up my cross again but I want you to be the Lord I surrender my relationships I surrender my loves I surrender my idols I surrender all these things Lord God and I say be my Lord my Lord my Lord Father you know who prayed that prayer you know who prayed that prayer this evening one before I get to my main point. There's been people in this place who said, Pastor, I want to be, I want the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon me. The Bible says this, that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Many of you have been desiring to walk in the gifts of the Spirit. Many of you have been desiring to speak in tongues or in another language. And you, you, you've been desiring that. And you say, man, I'm so interested in that. I know it's in the Bible, but I, I, I want that in my life. Let me say this to you. I'm going to read this to you as you're praying right now in Luke 11. Listen to this promise from Jesus. He said, he said so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. Listen to what he's talking about here because he continues. He says, which of you fathers, if your son asks you for a fish, will you give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? If you then... Though you are evil fathers, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Will you say, Pastor, I have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, He came to live inside of you when you received Jesus Christ. But you know what? There's a baptism of power that comes upon you. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. And you begin to walk in the ways that Jesus walked. You are endued with power to be a witness. And some of you have been craving that. And some of you have been wanting that. But let me say this to you. Today is your day. Because let me say this. My good father, he said this. You earthly fathers, you got some jacked up stuff inside of you. But if your child asks you for something, you give it to him. How much more me, your heavenly father, will I give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? Come on now. If you want that this morning, I want you to lift up your hand. Lift up your hand with boldness. Don't lift it up in shame. 
lift it up. You want that. I want that in my life. I want that in my life. Put your hands down. If you really want that this morning, I want you to come over here and get out of your seat with boldness, all 20 of you or whatever it was. I want you to get out of your seat and just line up across. Take a moment and pray for you. Just line up, face me, just across the way. Hallelujah. Just come in faith. Sweet Holy Spirit, come. We welcome you this morning. You know what's awesome about this? <laughs> Is you can have all six encounters, but really the Lord part. You have to work that out and the trust part. But you can have the encounters with the Holy Spirit even the day that you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's one person that's standing up here right now that raised their hand for the first time for salvation. And now they want to walk in the power. And they can. And they can. Come on now. I want you, I want you to just take a moment right now. Oh, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit this evening, this morning, God. We thank you right now for the power of your presence, God. And Lord, I just, come on, you guys that are standing up here, I want you to be reminded that the good Father said that if you ask the Holy Spirit, if you ask him for the Holy Spirit, he'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. So right now, everyone up here, I want you to say, Father, come on, say it with boldness. Father, I thank you. For the Holy Spirit, I want Him. Come on, I want Him. Baptize me and fill me with power. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, now we're just going to begin to pray. Father, we love you. We love you this morning, God. We love you this morning. So God, we just thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank you this morning in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you this morning. Come on now, begin to pray, Lord. Begin to put yourself in expectation mode. Put yourself in expectation mode. God wants, your daddy wants to bless you this evening. He wants to give you something. He wants to show you this mountain that you have to wake up early for. He's saying this because you took the step of boldness to come forward. Hallelujah. I'm going to pour it out on you so far. Thank you. We thank you in the name of Jesus for the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we receive it right now. We pray right now, Father. We pray right now. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit.